Hello again, MMA True Believers. This is Jason Burgos for SureDog.com. And with me tonight is a veteran of the combat sports game, having been in it now for 10 years. She was the inaugural Bellator Strawweight Champion and recently returned to MMA after three years away with a first round TKO of destruction of Jamie Nivare at Combate Americas 31. She makes a return at Combate Americas. The Combate America's cage on August seventh, August second in Fresno, California. She is the Warrior Princess, but honestly, after this career, she should be called the Warrior Queen. She is Zoila Frosto. Zoila, thank you so much for tonight for giving me some time because we're close to the fight, and I know you know it's getting a little crazy when it gets close to the fight. It definitely is. It's a crazy <laughs> night, and I still got a couple of hours to drive. So <laughs> okay, wait, where are you driving to? Uh, Sacramento. I usually um, train in the morning there, mm -hmm. uh, team house meal. So, well, not a couple hours, about an hour and a half, depending on traffic. But, um, yeah, so I try to get there as soon as I can before mm -hmm. it gets too late to rest and get up for wrestling. How many, uh, how many sessions do you do a day? Is it two? Is it three? How many do you? It just depends on the day. Usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm doing about three sessions a day. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, Thursday, I'm doing about two, sometimes three. Saturday is usually about one. Mm -hmm sometimes too um it just really depends on the day and how i feel and the type of recovery and stuff that i need so and, and what i need to work on so it just really depends but um a lot more than um more than my doctor would like me to but, you know, <laughs> I do what I do, so. is there a specific reason why the doctor's not for that uh recovery well i have oh, okay. a specific doctor that, that i work with now um uh andy galpin um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know them. Yeah, so, I mean, I, he, I just, I overtrain. You know, okay. A lot, of, a lot of athletes do, but I've been yeah. doing it for many years, and it's just how I feel. It's, it's just how I get my, my confidence in. Um, but, but working with him, I, there's there's a lot of things that, that I've been um, noticing that I, it's a lot better now mm. since listening. So. Mm -hmm. Now, the first main specific question I wanted to ask is the last time we talked, uh, we mentioned, or you mentioned, how you were on a one-fight deal with this Combate Americas, that yeah. first fight with them. So what made you decide to, to stay on with Combate? Did you, in that time, because you had a very impressive win, like I mentioned in the opening, did uh, a Bellator or UFC or any promotions come calling? Because, I mean, you would be, at least for those two promotions, a fantastic addition to their flyweight division. Or, you know, did this something kamates do in in your time with them that made you say yeah you know what this is the right fit i want to be here i did get some calls from from other organizations but i was happy with the way i was treated and and uh, like i I've, I've mentioned before i uh, i just want to go where i'm going to be treated right you know I'm, um, i've been doing this for a very long time now and and it really comes down to who's going to treat me right you know um especially as an athlete and, and um that's really important to me nowadays so here i am were there any specific things i mean like you know you've been in this game a long time you, you've, you've dealt with very different promotions all, all over the place so what did they do that made you you know really say you know what this is a little different than the normal this is uh, you know something that i want to make long term were they just very welcoming were they you know did you have like a dressing room and they separated the red m m's from the green m m's you know something fascinating or different I mean, what did they do everything, everything. <laughs> all, all, all the above, they just went above and beyond i think to sign me and and, uh, and i was happy with it and even after signing me you know they've been they've been pretty good to me so um I, i'm unhappy you know from the first time with the promotion and um and it shows too that last fight um my training i'm just uh, i feel better you know and um and things are looking better and i couldn't ask for anything more now, is it, you know, hopefully you can give me some specifics, but is it, uh, is there a, a term in terms of uh, how many fights and how many years? Can I get any of that information? Yeah, five fights. So, All uh, right. Five. Very nice, very nice. Now, it, 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 you know, we also talked about in our last conversation, you know, it, part of the reason why you kind of soured, so to speak, on MMA was just what you were getting offered pay-wise from some of the promotions. It's, it's, it's hard enough you know, for female combat athletes to get fair wages compared to the men. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Is this deal maybe one of the best deals you've ever gotten in your career or maybe the best, at least financial-wise, deal you've gotten in your career so far? I wouldn't say it's the best, but um, from what I've been getting offered lately, it's by far the best. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
you know, now you haven't fought since February. Uh, you were supposed to, I think, fight in May, and the fight was canceled, and, 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 and you know, now you're fighting. Now, can, can you talk about what happened that the fight got canceled, and now you're not fighting all the way from February to August? Well, at, at first, it was, it was April. I was supposed to fight in April, uh-huh. in LA. Um, they couldn't find somebody soon enough to, to get me on that card in April, so they pushed it to May. Um, we were supposed to fight in May, Stockton, and the week uh, before the fight, um, my opponent got hurt, mm. um, from, from what we were told. So, um, you know, there's, there wasn't really much we could do about it. And not only that, but we couldn't find somebody that fast. So um, right after that, it was like, okay, well, what's next? What can we get her on next? Can we get her on Blue? <laughs> can we get her on Texas? Can we get her on? They were, they were just trying to get me on the next card, the next card, the next card. But okay. um, it was getting really hard to find opponents that soon you know most most fighters want a full training camp for me right um so it was just really hard to find somebody and so um you know they said that they're going to fresno in august and if i wanted to wait and um i mean i really didn't want to wait but um <laughs> you know they, they asked nicely and um and i was like okay now okay. Like as I mentioned, you haven't fought since August, and all these different things happen. You know, the the fights couldn't be made, the logistics, people getting injured. How frustrating is that? Because like you know, I talked about before, you came back after a long time away. I know you were doing kickboxing and other things, but a long time away from MMA. Fantastic performance. Obviously, I'm sure you want to get right back in there. Is it frustrating? Is it not just on a competitive level? You have a new contract. You want to make that money. Is it like Jesus? I just want to get back in there and fight. How frustrating is it? I cannot, I can't put it into words how frustrating it is. Um, many my, many fire, fighters that know, you know, we, we live off of those paychecks. Um, so, and especially at the level that I am, that I'm at, I, you know, I, I fight full time, you know, so, um, and then being ready, being ready to go and finding out the week before that I'm not going to get paid, you know, mm. and, and I put a lot of, I put a lot of time and money into my camps now, especially the level that I'm at. So, yeah, yeah. um, I found myself in a little hole and I was like, what wow. the hell am I gonna do? You know, like yeah. um, uh, so it just it sucks. It really sucks to be in that um, to be in that spot. So it, it it was it was really frustrating. But you know, um, August comes around pretty soon. And what did out. did you get? Did the combate at least offer kind of show money, or maybe is that why they were really trying to push hard to to get you yeah, in a fight they, soon because they, they couldn't. They, they all- they did. They offered okay. me show money, so I mean that that helped yeah. um, an awful lot. And you know they didn't have to do that, especially that that soon. Um, so uh, I, was, I was able to make it through, you know, um, up until now. So I, I mean I'm, I'm I don't know. I mean it would be nice to win show and and win money. Of but, course, you know, yeah. Beggars can't be choosy. Not only that, but I don't think any of the promotion would have done that for me. So, I mean. Mm. You make it to weigh ins, you know, and that happens. But yeah. you know, if you don't, if the fighter doesn't make it to that, so like it just, it, it's not anything that that's going to be great. So, um, how does that affect sponsorships? So like, do you still get your sponsorship money, or you only get sponsorship money if you are on the show on television, those kind of things? That really depends on the sponsor. You know, okay. I, I have some, I have some sponsors that I know personally that that um, that did help me out. Um, and then there are other sponsors that were, oh, if you fight, then, you know, we'll pay you. And then again, I wasn't getting that much money to begin with mm. when it comes to sponsors for that for that fight, you know. So, um, so it's, it's half and half. It just really depends on, on, on who the sponsors are, and mm. uh, that's really it. Now, to get some clarification, I couldn't really tell. I mean, you're, you're heavily being marketed for this fight. It, is your fight the main event or is the co-main event? I believe it's the main event. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I've been told it's the main event, so... Yeah, because I was looking on, like, tap, Tapology had, like, a different name in the main event, but then again, the, the the information could be wrong. But, I mean, now that that is clear, you are the main event. I mean, how how big of a deal is that? I mean, you, you've you been away for a while, but of course, we talked about it before. You're you're a legit name. Everybody knows Ola Frosto. You, yeah. you are a star in this sport for a long time. But still, you away for a while, you just had one fight already. Main event, it, it, you know, it, is, that, is that part of why it's really, you know... Combate really stood out for you. You feel a level of support that is, you know, unmatched and pretty special. Is, is that a unique thing? So fast? Yes, absolutely. That that's that's exactly what made me want to jump on that contract. Was you know the way they make me feel. You yeah. know, um, and that's it, really. Was there was that like part of the pitch to you? Like, look, we want to make you a, a star at like the forefront yeah. of this division. Yeah. Well, not the forefront of the division, but but a star. You know, I've, I've been around for a very long time. I made a really big name for myself. Um, 
but it's not as big as it should be, you know? So, yeah. um, and, and they're behind, you know, they're behind me when it comes to that. So I was like, hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> now break down this fight for me with Reina Cordoba. Uh, she's gotten finishes in all but one of her fights. And, but the only, you know, that, that shows the dominance is just submissions and stand up. She seems balanced everywhere. However, it was on the Costa Rican MMA scene. We're really unsure of what the Costa Rican MMA scene is really like. Have you been able to, to get a lot of footage on her to scout her? And when you are scouting her, what, what, what do you see? Break her down for me in terms of where she has strengths and weaknesses and areas you have been really you know, strategizing and preparing for. And there, there's not too much footage of her. I mean, the, the footage that we that we were able to find, me and my coaches, were was um, fights like three years ago, you know, four mm -hmm. years ago. So um, the only one we were able to get our hands on was the one that she lost, the fight that she lost. Mm -hmm. But you know, she's been competing for a very long time, you know, and and um, and she's a little, she's a little older. So um, you know, I, I I can't take her lightly like any other fight. You know, she's got a nine and one record, regardless if it's all in Costa Rica and then just one fight here or not. Um, she's, she's coming to fight, she's coming to, to try to win, you know, so, um, I can't take her lightly, and, um, she, she's really strong when it comes to that, so when it comes to that judo background, mm. um, and, you know, you don't win nine out of ten fights, and, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, you know? I mean, yeah, fighting somebody in front of you, and yeah. have that record, you know, you, you better be good, so, um, I'm I'm prepared for whatever she comes to bring, you know. But I, I do believe I'm going to be the stronger striker. I do believe I'm going to be the better athlete, whether she's going to be maybe a little better at judo than I am or mm -hmm. not, you know. I feel like I have an advantage everywhere, you know. I've been doing this long enough. She has too, but mm -hmm. I feel like I've been putting a lot of time and effort and money into this sport, you know. And um, and anybody that's going to stand in front of me is going to get help. Um, and you're going to have to take a win from me, you know. Um. Because I'm gonna fight to the end, 15 minutes. Two questions in one. Um, the, since you, you know, you know, we're talking about uh, video footage and look at this. So is that a big? predominant part of your game some fighters like it some fighters don't i was just talking to alex gilpin a couple of days ago he likes it and then it kind of backfired against him against lance palmer because lance palmer changed his style a little bit you know is, is footage watching videotape a big part of your your game and two if it is and you don't have too much with someone like her is a camp like this just based around you know working on your skills working on your te technique and making sure you're the best version of you going in to face her you know, in, in the beginning of my career, I never really watched any footage of anybody. I didn't care to watch any footage of anybody. <laughs> um, and it was just, you know, all about me. But uh, throughout my career, I've always just kind of, there were little things that I was like, man, if I would have known, man, if I would have known. <laughs> so um, now that I have this, I wouldn't say new camp, but I've been with, with CSA for for half of my career now. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do watch a little bit of tape. And, okay. and it's just the beginning. I, I don't I don't try to dissect every little bit of it. I'll let my coaches do that. But yeah. I'll watch just enough to pick up tendencies, to see what they like to do, to see what they're, what, um, what they're bad at, you know, um, especially when it comes to striking. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and I go from there. Because uh, a little bit of tape, is, I believe, is good. It, it's helped me out mm -hmm. a lot. So, um, I like it. <laughs> I just try not to. I just try not to obsess with it, and try not to obsess with yeah. what they're really good at, and freak myself out. You know, um, I just watch just enough to to be ready to be prepared for what they're gonna do. You know, because people mm -hmm. really don't change too much when it comes to fights, or they don't change too much when they when they go into deep waters. So right. when somebody's in trouble, they tend to do the same thing. Um, so you know, that's just kind of what I what I look out for. Now, another thing we talked about when we, we talked a few months back, because, you know, I was trying to get an idea of what the, the reasoning was for your, your, you know, leaving MMA. Of course, it was the money thing, weren't getting good offers, which was a bunch of bullshit anyway. Um, and then also another thing was that you, you soured, mentioned you soured on sport, just based on the fallout with your ex-husband. Now, you know, with a, a camp back, you know, you're, you're, you're now into second camp or your second uh, con deal with Combate. Now you have a new fight, five fight deal. You've got support from the, the promotion is not to say it was gone but is your love for this sport and being a part of it like back to the way you want it to be and at full strength 100 percent you are loving and may fully invested once again absolutely absolutely <laughs> you know um, i kind of left it just sour you know about yeah. just the way that, that i was treated by bellator when when i when i left i just um just the way i felt about it when, when i was with my ex just everything about it was just it was just it was dark, you know, it was really dark for me and I needed it. And, and when it comes to fighting, period. So 
um, switching back over to MMA, or not switching back over to MMA, MMA, but fighting Muay Thai and fighting some kickboxing and then coming back to it. You know, I needed, I needed to get, I needed to get rid of that fear, you know, and, um, and, and I did that first fight back and then, um, you know, I just kind of went from there and ever since then, it's just been like, man, I feel so much more comfortable, I, you know, and, and in fights, I've never felt comfortable. I've never felt mm. relaxed. It was always like tense, be tense. And, and, and when I was tense, you know, <laughs> lose your breath, you know, you have a, you have a adrenaline jumps. And, and that was always happening for, mm. for like eight years that it happened, you know, in, in all my fights. So this last fight, finally, it all came together, you know, it was calm, I was relaxed, like, I was like, let's have fun. I went out there and fun lasted a minute and two two seconds and I'm like, damn, all these years, it took me all these years to yeah. be able to like just relax, yeah. be cool, have fun, okay, so I mean, I, I truly have fallen in love with it again, um, putting it all together, you know, um, people don't understand, like, all these sports are different, boxing is different than Muay Thai, kickboxing is different than Muay Thai and boxing, wrestling is different, like, everything is different, and when you put it all together, it's completely different too, yep. so... You know, and, I, and I'll see a lot of Muay Thai fighters watching MMA and like, well, you shouldn't be doing that in striking. Like, you don't understand what yeah. <laughs> you, when, 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 when somebody's, you know, threatening to take down. Mm -hmm. Everything has to change. And um, being able to put that all together with the coaches that I have, like, uh, Darren Winoyama is, is an amazing MMA coach. He's been around forever. And um, he's helping putting that all together for me. Um, Kieran Fitzgibbons. I mean, uh, Alex Munoz wrestling for her from Team mm -hmm. Alpha Male. Like, Uriah Favors helped out a little bit. Anytime that I've gone out there, like all these coaches just putting it all together for me because it's MMA, you know? Um, it's not just kickboxing, it's not just boxing, it's not just wrestling. I'm, be, I'm able to put it all together and, and putting it all together, mixed martial arts, it, you know, I found love in it completely, you know, because I have so many different tools now and, and wherever the fight goes, I can do that or I can put the fight where I want it to go. So. Uh, definitely fall in love with it again, and um, we'll see. Would you say that, like now more than years ago, are, are you surrounded by the best situation you you've ever been in terms of training partner, coaches? I know you said you you had the same coach for a lot of your career, but you know, Gary Faber and guess is new, Alex Munoz is new. Are you in like you're? It's almost a perfect storm. You're in love with the sport again. You are a better version of yourself because of the you know the work you do with kickboxing. And are you surrounded by the best group? to take you to a whole nother level than ever before. Absolutely. It's when, when it comes to the coaches, when it comes to the training partners, like my main training partner for this, for this fight was Alexis Davis. Like nice. she's getting ready for almost the exact same fighter that I am. And I'm getting ready for almost the exact same fighter that she mm, is, you know, on a different level. So being able to work with somebody like that, and she's a woman, you know, I, I get yeah. a lot of work from men too, you know, and that's a really good look. I got high level men that are MMA fighters, I got high level men that are Muay Thai fighters. Getting all those different looks, being able to work with Alexis Davis, my sister is a monster, she's super <laughs> yep. fast, mm -hmm. um, you know, Jenna Fabian, she's in that PFL tournament, like, she's big, she hits hard, um, I have so many high-level women that I can work with at, at, at CSA, you know, and um, and it's a blessing, you know, so um, I'm more than excited to, to get in there with this girl, because it's like, what is she gonna, what is she gonna show me that I have not seen, mm -hmm. you know, on a high level, on a really high level, you know, she might... She might have really good judo, you know, and I'll give her respect for that. But, but she's not going to show me something that I haven't seen, and um, I, I think I have the upper, upper hand for it. Now, you mentioned uh, having fun, and you mentioned Kieran Fitzgibbons. I, I follow you on Instagram. I love watching the videos where you work with him, and I've seen the videos where he's working with other high-level, talented fighters. Um, talk to me about, you know, your what he's ha what influence he's brought into your into your striking is he uh, how long have you been working with him like what's the influence and and how has he taken helped to take your your you know evolve and mature your striking to all new levels i i think it's been a little over five years now since i came here mm -hmm. and 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 before that i mean people called me a striker because i was just an explosive athlete you know mm -hmm. I, I i did start with Muay Thai with jasper tayaba and fresno but um as far as striking goes, I didn't, you know, or MMA goes, I didn't know any wrestling. I didn't know any wrestling for the first three, four years that I started. So it was just trying to be athletic and get up again, you know? And then when I fought Misha, it was like, I don't know what the hell to do. I don't know this wrestling stuff. Yeah. So um, it was just all weird to me. And, and um, you know, and back then it was like throwing one or two strikes. And I was, mm. you know, those strikes were really hard. So, you know, girls were 
they would back away from it and they were kind of scared of it. Mm. Being able to work with Curie and just, just how he is as, as a coach and um, he's not, he's, I don't know, he's just one of the, and he's just an amazing coach when it comes to women because we're, we're a different type of animal than, than men, you know, we're emotional mm. creatures, you know, especially high level athletes, we're, we're a little crazy, you know, and, um, <laughs> Uh, there's fear, there's doubt, and then we're confident one day, and then the next day we're just like, you know, beating ourselves up. And no matter how how great you are, you know, and um, and being able to work with Kyrian since Gibbons um, has been amazing for my career. You know, uh, as far as striking goes, dealing with with certain fighters, dealing with certain things outside of the gym, uh, he's he's just been amazing for my career, and it's showed. You know, ever since I got to CSA, I think I'm I think I'm seven and one now, including Muay Thai and kickboxing. Mm-hmm. But you know. Uh, leaving Ohio, I was, I was, I think I was like one in four, mm. and then, and then getting to CSA, it was like seven and one. So you know, there's, there's a lot to be said about that, and um, I'm just, I'm like, hearing his Gibbons has been amazing for, for my career and for my, um, for my life, you know. So it's just good. It's a good fit for me, and that, and and on top of, you know, Darren Wanoyama is my MMA coach, mm. and has been amazing for my jiu-jitsu, my wrestling. Um, and putting it all together, so you know I, I can't complain, man. I'm in, I'm in a really good spot. What makes uh, Kyrian's like teaching style unique? Because just by chance, I've happened to talk to a, a lot of fighters that work with Henry Hoof. The Henry, they always say Henry Hoof really simplifies it. It makes it easy, understandable, and it just connects super well with these guys. What what makes Kyrian's kind of teaching style unique? Because I'm sure you've dealt with different striking coaches. What makes him different than the other ones? Pretty much the same thing, you know. He just he, he says it in a way that that it does click. He says mm-hmm. it in a way that that I can understand it. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with other other coaches, and I've had other great coaches as well. But for whatever reason, I just I connect well with Curie, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just the way that he says things, the way that he explains it. Um, it just it, it it comes out to me. So. <laughs> now I always like to end the interviews just to learn more about the subject and the fighter and so you know people are watching fans of this can learn a little bit more about the fighter something they don't know about the fighters like like what are your personal passions away from fighting that has nothing to do with fighting because I see the Instagram you're in there training all the time so on those rare occasions you're not training what do you what do you like to do do you, do you like to stamp collect are you a big fan of you know cooking shows are you a big fan of outdoor shows do you like to, to fly kites are you you know are, what 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 do you do that make people would make people say Zoila likes to do that? I, I didn't expect that. I like to shoot. I like to shoot. You know? Ah, okay. I, my, my 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 first love is my family. They're the most important thing in the world to me. So I, any chance I get to see them, I go and I go and see them. But other than that, man, I love to shoot. Like the adrenaline <laughs> that I get from it. Um, I, I just I just bought a Glock and I love that thing. That's, 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 that's my baby for sure. So. Um, is it is there any do you do like any kind of competitions did you ever you know is there like connection like maybe you thought about law enforcement or the military back in the day and there's a connection from that like like what's what makes you into that man i've been i've been i've been around law enforcement for a long time ah. uh, all my family is in law enforcement um and i've just i've always thought about it but i've, I've been so deep into this into my career that it's like ah, not maybe later ah, maybe later mm-hmm. ah, maybe later you know and um and i've done so well with this that i just you know i, I haven't done it um mm. But, it, but it, it's always intrigued me, you know, so, but, yeah, I've always been around guns, and, and, and now that I have one, I'm like, I, I love it. Um, I take a lot of, a lot of uh, like, gun courses as well, hmm. um, but no competition yet, yet. Um, just my, my life is surrounded by fighting, you know, and, uh, and I like to keep that way until I retire, so um, the shooting is just a, uh, just a hobby for me. So we, we have a high-level fighter badass striker she likes glocks she can shoot guns i mean clearly if the mma career doesn't work i black widow the next black widow seems very obvious i mean has blackwater possibly called you a private a, a company job are we expecting special forces if if the mma thing does it, it doesn't i've mentioned stuff like that to a few people you know i would love to do something like that so mm. some sort of protective or executive protective um service but you know i'm very much into this, but you know, who, who knows? When I retire, you know, we'll see what, what doors open. But um, yeah, I would love to do something like that. You know, I can do it with my hands. I can do. I can do anything. So. So maybe Frosto Sisters uh, Bodyguard Agency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've actually, I've actually mentioned something like that to her. We've talked about something like that. Um, 
because she's a shooter too, you know. She's uh. got, she's got her guns as well, and um, so you know. <laughs>